I'm going to try and edit the intro you're about to see without using a keyboard at all. So I'm just going to open up a new project in Resolve here and... Oh. This isn't actually a big deal because I'm using the Toolbox Elite Plus here and I've already mapped the project name for this as one of my functions if I press these two buttons. So I can type even without using my keyboard at the time. Now this video is sponsored by Toolbox and I will be using the Toolbox Elite Plus which is their latest best editing console and it's, it's basically that. It's an all-in-one editing console and I am using some beta software that has a few new features that will be coming out soon and I'll showcase them in just a second. And I'll also talk a little bit later about how it differs from using something like the speed editor from DaVinci Resolve themselves. A lot of times if I'm adding b-roll to an a-roll sequence for example, like if I was going to add b-roll over the top of this, what I would do is I would maybe go to the clip and then scroll through and get ins and in and out points. So what I can do using this is I have one, I've got the knob here, which is clicked. So each click is one frame. And then if I want to, let's say I want to go from this clip here, I'm going to then put an in point there by clicking in on the knob there. And then let's say I want to go to about there and then I'll have my out point set to clicking in this button. So all of these knobs and dials are also buttons. And what this dial does here is actually goes one second. So if I want to quickly go through a clip or my timeline, I can then just sort of scroll through like that. I'm actually just gonna select all of my clips here and I've just got this button right here mapped to shift. So I can just select them all like that and then place them on the timeline. And then this one right here is alt because I actually don't really want the audio for any of these. So I'm just gonna hold alt, get rid of that. And then I'm gonna delete all that. Now I am also using the Logitech MX Master 3, which has a few extra buttons on it and I have them mapped to certain things in Resolve. So I do have my backspace on my thumb button right here. And then I've got a couple buttons here and here that I also have, that I've always used and still kind of use them in conjunction with the toolbox. But of course, if you just have a regular mouse without extra buttons, you could just map all the features that you would need on the toolbox itself. Now, before I actually start editing, I'm going to make this look a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to go over to the color page here. I shot this on the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K, the full frame one. So I'm just, I've just got a power grade here that I'm just going to add. Now, this is fine, but what I will show you is a new feature, which actually just popped up with a reminder here because I haven't actually used this much, but that is the hover adjust. So, if I, let's say, I'm going to go into my exposure and I usually do exposure in one of two ways. I'll either adjust the lift here. So as you can see, there's that like little pop up around what I'm hovering over. So if I want to maybe decrease my lift a little bit, I can then just hover over that and adjust it with the dial. So I'm actually going to, mm, I'm going to leave it as it is for now because the other way you can do it is with the curves here. So now if I hover over the line here on the curve and I can do the same thing. I can move that point that I'm hovering over left and right and then using the scroll wheel here I can move it up and down. So if I want to maybe add a bit of a curve here, decrease my shadows and then over here I might actually just drag this up a little bit, create a little bit more contrast and then I want to actually move it a little bit to the left. So you can use the dials without having to drag it and you can be a little bit more precise when it comes to that because these are clicked so you don't have to just like try and get it perfectly with your mouse. And this would be super handy if you weren't using a mouse, like if you're using a touchpad or a trackpad on a laptop, those can be a little bit more finicky to get like really precise things. And some things that I find can be really difficult to like really nail down is I'm just gonna go into a new node here. But let's say I wanted to add a little bit of like a teal and orange sort of look. So I might go into my log wheels here and then if I want to add a bit of blue in my shadows, I can hover over here and rather than like dragging it manually and it's like, oh, okay, it can kind of get there, but I can use the dials to go around. So let's say I want to go about that angle. So I want that angle and then I can scroll to go in and out more or less saturation. So you can be very, very precise. I want a little bit more blue. So I'm going to just bring it around a little bit more. Let's say I want to go with that. And then I don't have to click anything. I don't have to drag anything with the mouse. I can just hover and then adjust it with the dials. And then if I just want to copy that grade onto everything else, I'll just hold my shift button, have this one selected, this one, and then I'll just middle click on that. 
that adds that same grade to all of them. Now, this may not be what it will look like finally. I just sort of wanted to demonstrate that uh, hover adjust because that can be pretty handy in the color page. And that is sort of one of the things they're leaning into now is trying to be more of an all-in-one editing console rather than just working on the edit page, the cut page, for example. Unlike the speed editor, or I guess any of the editing tools from Resolve themselves, like the speed editor is great on the cut page, but it doesn't work too well on any of the other pages. And you've obviously got like the color panels that you can get for color grading. It's not super helpful on the edit page of the cut page. Whereas this now with these, with these new updates can work really well on the edit page. And also now you can do some stuff with color as well, but let's get back into editing here. So what I have, let's say I want to get a certain part of this clip, kind of like where I did with the ins and outs before. I want to maybe start here and it, because it's already in my timeline, I have the left button right here mapped to start to playhead. So that'll just ripple delete everything before the playhead. And let's say I want to go to about there and then I'll hit end a playhead, which I've got mapped to the right button here. So then there's, there's my one clip and then I'll click play. Cool. I can then, I'll, I'll adjust the speed and everything like that. And I'll put it to the music after I've chosen sort of the clips that I want. And let's just have a look here. Honestly, nothing in that clip, super exciting. And then this one, there's a bit of a longer clip. So I'm actually just gonna scrub through it with a second dial rather than with the, the knob itself. So I wanna get like a nice turn of that knob. Let's go like, maybe, yep, there, we'll start it there. So then I'm just gonna start to play head that. And then, Right when I stop turning it there, we'll go end of playhead. And there's, there's a clip right there. And then I'm just going to zoom in so I can maybe drag that up so I can sort of see it better. This scroll wheel is super handy because it means I don't have to then go up and click this or click this and then like manually scroll in and out using this or using like, you know, alt and control and scrolling and stuff like that. I can just scroll in here. And then if I do want to go back to the full timeline, I click it and there's the whole timeline. And let's say I wanted to move this clip somewhere else rather than dragging it and trying to put it in the right spot, I can select it. And then if I press these two buttons here, that'll cut. And then I can go back here. And then let's say I want to paste it. I do those two buttons there. And I talk about using the start and then to playhead. But what you can also do obviously is using other buttons. I have this button here set to split clip or razor. So then if I did want to like keep this part of the clip and not get rid of it, then I can just cut the clip as it is and then let's cut it there and then let's say i wanted to compare to i'm gonna put that over there and i want to compare this one to this one a lot of times especially when you're shooting like multi-cam stuff like this it is very handy to be able to easily disable and enable clips especially if you have a clip on top like this so if i want to see what's on the top i can do that and then i'll just click that and disable that top clip so i can see what's underneath it i find myself a lot of the time if I'm shooting on multiple cameras, enabling and disabling clips all the time, especially when cutting up a roll that is multi-cam, because I don't want to only put in the stuff that I'm going to use. I'll put in everything and then get rid of and disable the things that I don't want. Also, if you're anything like me and you like to just hit control S like all the time after making any change, uh, double click that button and it's got to say, that's what it was set to automatically. But again, you can set anything. Now let's say I made a big mistake and I got rid of this clip and I'm like, no, I want that back. Undo, really simple. And then of course, if I wanted to redo that, then of course I've got two buttons right next to each other that are undo and redo. That is set that by default in the resolve preset. Okay, and this one's just for demonstration purposes because I don't really need proxies with B raw, but on my Lumix cameras, I almost always generate proxies before I actually start editing. So right now I've got this clip with a pro I generated a proxy for this. And what I like to do is have an easy way to switch between proxies and the full resolution media because proxies don't look good. So if you want to like see detail or, you know, just make sure everything looks fine, then you can switch back to the high quality media. But then if you want better playback, go to the proxies. So using the modifier buttons here, if I hold down this, which is set to alt, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will do everything alt will do on the tour box because with the software here we've actually got combinations so if i use this button as alt and then i either click and drag like i did before with the mouse or press a key on my keyboard 
then it will act just like if you are holding down Alt on the keyboard. But in the software here, you can set up all these combinations as well as you know the defaults for all of the buttons themselves. So what I have these two buttons here set to while holding this button in combination is to switch back and forth between my proxy media and my high quality media. Also, as I'm scrolling through here, you notice that there is a click to these wheels here or these, these dials. However, that's not like a real click. If I actually just unplug this for a second and I had the Bluetooth switched off, so it's not gonna just connect. But if I turn it, it's, it's actually quiet. So that click is entirely just haptic feedback, which I think is a really cool feature because you can have it on or off. Sometimes you may not want that click or that haptic feedback. So having it able to be turned off or you know on, because I, I think on is probably the best way. And that was one of the big gripes I had with the speed editor was that you can't make the search dial clicked at all. So going frame by frame was often kind of difficult, whereas this can make it a lot easier to go frame by frame because of those clicks. And now one other thing that might be sort of a common use, it was uh, one of the defaults in this, and I actually do use uh, dynamic trim mode a fair bit, which is on the keyboard, it's set to T, but on here I just have it set to up on the D-pad here. So now I can then just grab this and do the dynamic trim rather than the regular trim, then I can go back to normal trim mode using the down arrow. Okay, now I like this clip that I shot towards at the end. This was on the 28 to 105 at 105. And what I'll do is, because I also like a little bit of the rest of the clip as well, I'm gonna just split it there, scroll through to where I want it there, and then I wanna cut it there. I think that's where I want the end of the intro to be. So I'll take that there. And then we probably don't need the rest of this. And actually, as you can see in this clip itself, you don't even need to use any particular finger. While I was just doing this shot here, I just used my ring finger on the, the dial there. So like, yeah, you could move your entire hand over and use your index finger or whatever. But because of the way it's laid out, it's also quite small. Is this actually smaller than I thought it was? And it's also, this is kind of unrelated, but it's also quite dense, it's quite heavy which I like because it's very sturdy. It's not gonna slide around on your desk or anything. If we go to maybe one of the buttons here, you can see this one is release mode. So for each of the buttons, you've got standard, which is when the button is pressed down. Up is when the button is released. Repeat is if you hold down the button, it'll just keep doing whatever that function is. I personally haven't found a use for that, but I'm sure there are plenty. And then you've got AB where pressing will do one thing and releasing will do another. And I think one use case for that could be maybe like a copy paste sort of situation where holding it down will copy and then releasing it will paste. That could be an easy way to do it with one button rather than assigning either two separate buttons or two separate combinations to do copy paste or other functions that you would always do in order. And now just before I get all my selects together, I'm just gonna show you one of the other new features in this beta, which is the shuttle browse. So I'm actually gonna go into built-in functions here, go to DaVinci Resolve. It'll sort of act similar to the search dial on the speed editor, where it can actually be a little bit inertia-based. So if I do it sort of fast, it'll sort of keep going for a little bit after, even though the wheel itself isn't turning, but it just sort of like pushes it as if it is, like if it had some weight to it. Now, that's how it works in the cut page. In the edit page, it does do the same thing, but as you can see, like the playhead's not moving, this is just scrolling. But if you want it to act the same way, if we go into our like timeline settings here, we can then turn on a fixed playhead, so then it'll act more like it would in the cut page. So that's something that you sort of do a lot of if you like the cut page, but you want the functionality of the ed edit page, then you can sort of just set fix playhead and then everything else will will scroll with it. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select all of my clips here and then I'm just going to, actually, I'm just gonna create a stack timeline here and drag all of that down. And then I'll actually just go and delete gaps up here. Now you could set delete gaps to a button on the toolbox here, but you know, it's easy enough to just go there. If that was something that you did a lot, then you could obviously do that. Now, I'm not gonna finish editing this in this video because it's gone on way too long, but I will show you one more feature that they have in this new beta software, and that is the mouse drag simulation. And this isn't a resolve specific function. This is just a general function that you could do with anything. But let's say I wanted to move this clip over without dragging it for some reason, right now I've got this dial here set to the mouse drag simulation. So if I, let's say wanted to put this here and then I can drag it across 
simply by turning that dial. And then you've actually got your settings here so you can have it as left, middle or right mouse button or horizontal or vertical dragging. And then you can adjust your sensitivity and acceleration and everything like that. Okay, so since recording the rest of this video, there's actually been a couple of small updates. So I'll just go through them really quickly now. The first one is workspace recognition. So when you're in Resolve, you've got all the different workspaces. Now in the toolbox console here, you can actually set, and I've just made like a new custom preset here. And then you can set all the buttons and dials on the toolbox to different things depending on the page you're in and it'll automatically detect what page you're on. So right now, as you can see on Resolve, I'm on the edit page and it says edit right here. If I switch over to Fusion, it'll switch over to Fusion. Same with Cut, like I can go to any of these pages and it'll automatically detect that. So that means you can have not just one overall preset, you can have a preset for each different page so you can actually utilize even more features depending on the page that you're on. And the other new feature, which may be more helpful in some pages rather than others, so that may be a thing that you have set to a dial, and that is shuttle playback. I have that set to this dial right here. It works similar to on the speed editor, the shuttle mode, where if you turn it a little bit, it'll play it like one time speed and then two times speed if you turn it more. You can actually see this sort of pops up at the bottom. So it's playing back at one time speed. If I wanna click it more, it'll go two times, I can just, choose the speed that it plays back. And of course, like a lot of the other settings in the software here, you can even change some of these. So if you don't want 16 times, you can just get rid of it. Now I am gonna finish editing this after I cut the cameras, but I'm still not gonna use a keyboard for this because that's that, that was the whole challenge. But this isn't necessarily a replacement for a keyboard. It's more just, I wanted to see whether I could edit entirely without a keyboard. And I guess I can't. And I think the two biggest benefits is one, you have the functionality of still using a mouse because it only takes one hand. And it also doesn't take that long to memorize where all the buttons are because they're all so different. They're in different places and they're all different shapes. It's very tactile and especially you've got that haptic feedback. So it's really easy to not have to look down at the buttons you're pressing. Whereas maybe on a keyboard, unless you're a really, really experienced editor and you just know where all the keys are and what they all a map to, this can be a lot easier to not only get used to, but also just easier to use than a keyboard. And as I mentioned, all of the knobs and dials are also buttons, so they have multiple functions. And of course, you've got your double click and your button combinations as well, so you can have so many different functions mapped to this one little box. So while I'm not gonna refuse to use my keyboard in my everyday life, I am going to continue using the toolbox here because it just does make things a lot quicker and easier. And I like the fact that it is really small. You can either connect it via Bluetooth or you can plug it in directly with a USB-C cable like I've done now. And I honestly don't even need to put this away on a shelf because it's so small, I can just put it just on the side of my desk here and it's not even in the way. But if you do wanna check it out, there is a link in the description. This is the Toolbox Elite Plus. Maybe go watch another video, subscribe, tell me what you think, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.